everybody how's it going we're gonna do a quick tip update on converting STLs um, to bodies in Fusion 360 this will be a little bit of an update video for you know 2020 there's been lots of different changes to, to Fusion and things look a little different toolbars look different icons look different the process is still relatively the same but uh, for new users it might throw you off a little bit so I figure we'll go through uh, the ways in which you import an STL and then turn it into a body that you can actually do something with in Fusion, uh, if you like. Uh, and we'll go over two different methods. So if you've got a, a low facet count or sort of a low resolution model, which is a pretty straightforward uh, process versus one that's a, a high resolution model where you've got a lot of facets to deal with and Fusion likes to puke on that uh, and, and one way to get around it. So we'll, we'll talk about the first one, the easiest one first. So of course we got a blank workspace here. We're gonna go to the insert and insert mesh uh, we're going to find this file here. I've got this little Lego minigun model. Um, I'm just going to import it right where it sits. And um, it's not, uh, it doesn't have too many facets in it. Uh, it's a very clean mesh. It's not bad. Easy print. Uh, but I'm going to say I want to add some holes or a couple handles or a stand or something to it. You can't do anything with that right here in. Um, uh, in your modifying your design workspace for your solid. Um, you have limited things you can do in your mesh workspace, but we'll get into that in a second. But So to actually modify it into a body, you've got to do a couple things. The first thing right off the bat is you've got to turn off your uh, design history. You can't capture design history while you're in the process of uh, converting uh, this thing into a mesh. Uh, you can turn it back on afterwards, but before it'll even let you, uh, you have to turn it off. So if you right click on this model, uh, you would look for a mesh to B rep uh, conversion. It doesn't exist. Uh, and it doesn't exist because you first have to go to document settings and say do not capture design history. You get a little error, you hit continue. And now if we come back over here, we have this mesh to B rep conversion. Uh, so that's what you need to do. So if you click on that, it's saying uh, select your mesh body. You can either pick it, pick it over here, and you see our operation is we're going to be a new body or a new component. Hit OK. You'll get a little warning here about the number of uh, facets in the model. Hey, it's got a lot. Do you want to proceed? Generally, anything that's around 30,000-ish, maybe 40,000-ish facets or less, it'll let you convert. It may take a while. Um, it might bog down your system a little bit, depending on what kind of computer you have. But this one, no real other action is required other than saying, OK. Um, we give it a second. Um, you see the screen flickers. We got a little bit of stuff happening down here, but you'll know it's done when over here on the left we have this new body pop up. So there we go. So and your mesh body has gone away. It's not gone away. It's just not visible anymore. So if you click it and click that, there's your original mesh body. So if we hide that and bring back the body, so now we're in good shape. And you can see we can click on facets. We can delete some things. We can add features. We can take features away. All that good stuff. So there's the first. Uh, first way of doing it. That's the easy straightforward. Now, uh, to back that up, if you want to capture design history now going forward, you can right click on your document settings and now say capture design history. So now anything you do and move and change or whatever, it'll show up down here in your timeline moving forward. So that's the first option. That's the easier of the two. Um, unfortunately, not all models are simple like that. Some of them are more complex. Um, in the process there's a couple extra steps you have to go through so let's go to insert let's do insert mesh again let's go find a higher uh, poly mask here so I have a sorry where is it where is it where's the just had it of course I gotta do a video and it Falls of screen mask. Here we go. Files. Screen mask full. So we have this nice little ghost face screen mask, whatever. Okay. And let's turn this to home. Come on. Get back to home. Home. Oh, you are home. Home. There we go. So you can see if we zoom in here, there are lots of lots more triangles, lots more facets involved in this model. Um, and process is basically the same. So let's first right click on document settings, do not capture design history. Now if we go straight to converting this to BREP, you'll notice the difference. So we'll right click, mesh to BREP, select our body which we have already, hit OK. And it's going to say, hey this has got 134,000 of them, uh, I ain't doing it. 
and he has aborted. So you just have to hit OK. So you might think you're stuck. You're really not. Um, what you can do is, uh, did we do the, oh yeah. So what we're going to do is go up here to the mesh workspace right here. And we're going to click this uh, reduce icon here, fourth in from the left, reduce. Select your body. So I always just come over and select the whole body like that. And the reduce type, I say uniform. And it's it's giving me a suggestion of 33,000. Um, and I know for this model and that, it's actually OK. Uh, so I'll hit OK right there. So it'll go through and it'll reduce that 135,000 facets down to 33,000 facets. And it'll be a little bit more palatable for the conversion process to take place. So you can see it's done already. And it didn't make a huge change. Um, it is you know, arguably not as smooth, especially down here. It got a little ugly. It's easily fixed with a plain cut in, say, mesh mixer or something like that. Um, but all depending on what you want to do. And later on, you can always actually, um, as you're exporting this, you can increase your face count to a high resolution, and you can even bring it into mesh mixer uh, and smooth it uh, to bring back some of the little fine details that might have gotten lost. And there's another video, so go look for it on that. Um, so anyway, it's now we've reduced it. We haven't converted it yet, but we've reduced it. So now if we pop back out here to our solid workspace, and now if we right click on our mesh body and we say mesh to B-Rep, and we say OK. Now it says, hey, you got 33,000. Do you want to proceed? Question mark? Yes. <clears throat> Same process. It'll go through it. It'll flash a couple times. It'll look like it's having a stroke. And then ultimately, it'll get done. Um, so while that's happening, anyone else got locked down hair? Holy crap. This is, uh, I'm not used to having long hair. I'm just stuffing underneath this thing. But, uh, yeah. It's not, uh, oh, it's done. It's done. It's done. Sorry. Let me brush it back. Stuff it back on the back, you beast. So there you go. Um, again, we still have our original mesh body, in case you ever want to go back to it. Uh, and you can turn that body up. So there's your mesh, your original mesh body. Uh, or not the original, but the converted one down to 33,000 faces. So we turn that off and bring back our body. That's what, uh, that's what we're looking like. So now you can do a construction plane. You can add features, do holes, squares, do whatever you want to do. Um, so there you go. That's the update for 2020. I hope it helps. Again, it's in no, no, uh, no uh, earth shattering changes. But the look and feel of Fusion has changed quite a bit over the last year or so. Uh, so doing a, uh, um, an update was probably uh, overdue. So anyway, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, talk to you soon.